Hi everyone, this is Mark Metternich, and I apologize for the microphone lack of quality. I am on the road, so I am recording through my internal microphone rather than my professional microphone. But here is a freebie of what is becoming, for many people, one of the most, if not the most powerful way to make selections within an image. Most people are familiar with luminosity masks or the layer style blending options, blend if in Photoshop. They might be familiar with color channel masking, color masking, quick mask in Photoshop where you can just paint or erase a selection and refine it. But for photographers, masking really is one of the last frontiers that people really truly master and it's one of the very most important. I plan to produce a video tutorial entitled something like Ultimate Masking Unmasked. Thank you, Robert Park, my co-partner in the Ultimate Fine Art Printmaking Workshop and owner of Nevada Art Printers and innovator of Lumachrome HD Paper, the best paper on the planet today. And that video tutorial is likely going to take people through each stage of masking from the most basic types of masking through every type of masking and likely the crescendo is going to be this. Now this is going to be just a quick freebie so I can only hit on some of the most fundamental aspects of this technique. But ever since this new dialogue window and new algorithms came out in Photoshop CC 2018 and 2019, it has been a massive game changer. This is not the old refine edge dialogue window. This is a new one called select and mask and it is outrageously powerful. So this is just a warmer upper and even what I show you here may just do the trick for you. What I love about it is its sheer power and simplicity. Personally, in my own work, whether working on other people's photos for galleries or fine art prints or my own work, I use all types of masking. I have been a pioneer of the layer style blending options blend if, and if that video tutorial has not been redone as of the time you're receiving this free video, it will be because it is one of the most powerful ways to blend. But I use luminosity masks, blend if, color channel masking, and all the other types that I have described, including some other even more advanced crazy ways. Sometimes you'll hear people say online, oh, blend if is better than luminosity masks, or luminosity masks are better than blend if. The true answer is sometimes one type of masking will be much better and sometimes a different type of masking will be much better. And if you really want to be able to make precise selections, especially those very difficult ones, like where you have foliage on a ridge line or trees and leaves and you have a background and you still want to adjust that background separately from the trees, those really difficult ones, there really is not one masking type is always the best. But this is a game changer. So as much as I'd like to tell you more about it, I'm gonna give you the foundational knowledge you need to get started, and then you can either wait for my tutorial coming out on masking, or you can go to YouTube and find videos that will show you every slider and every tool related to this. Now watch this, this is just incredible. Some of the very best Photoshop retouchers in the world are just raving about how this works. So this is a photo from John Solano, a client of mine, that ended up being about 15 megapixels after cropping and we made a 80 inch print for him. And some of you may have seen that incredible example of that 80 inch print where we were able to get almost a large format quality on this image. And I'm not gonna go into how I did that, but I will go into how it is so easy now to grab some of these very challenging selections. I tried luminosity masking on this, worked okay. I tried the layer style blending options, blend if, worked okay. But this one works so fast and so beautifully. So let's roll. Starting out, you can duplicate your layers so that you have two layers to work on or however you wanna work. 
You can even do it without a layer. But I'm going to go ahead and do a Command or Control J that duplicates the layer. And I'm going to grab the lasso tool. And what you don't want is a really good selection. You just want a rough selection of maybe the area you want to start working in. So I'm going to grab this. And what I'm interested in doing is grabbing this edge along these trees. And it would seem counterintuitive to make a selection that was so terrible. But watch this. We go up here now and you can just go to Select and Mask in the newest version of Adobe Photoshop. Or if you don't find that, go to Select and you'll find Select and Mask. And that's where you'll find the dialog window. Now, I have mine set up a certain way. And by default, yours will be a little bit different because I have my Remember settings checked so that it'll stay opening up the way I want it. There are many incredible tools here. I mean, freaky tools. And if you really want to be able to make incredible selections on your image, whether 8-bit, 16-bit, even potentially raw, smart object, 32-bit floating math images, which some of you might not know what that means, lossless images, it would benefit you to really learn every single thing that is in this screen here. But I'm gonna show you the most fundamental. I'm gonna zoom up on this image, and here's that difficult area. We want to be able to select this land, but not select this background water, or vice versa. I wanna be able to create a mask that isolates the island, or this mountain, and the statue, and be able to make separate adjustments to it, whether it is more sharpening or more noise reduction or bring out some dynamic range or work on the background and tame the brightness of the background or whatever I want to do. So if you pull back here, let me show you a couple of tools. You have a brush tool over here that works just like Quick Mask. If you right click, or you go up here to these options, you will have your options of choosing a hard brush or soft brush or sizing it. I like to use the brackets next to the P on my keyboard to size up my brush or down. This brush is going to brush at 100% opacity. So let's just say I get this area a little bit closer. But actually this new algorithm that they've built into this is so astonishing, you really don't even need to do this. Main deal here is do not overshoot. Don't try to get it really, really close. Don't try to help the algorithm too much. If you get up there too close and you start cutting into the lighter areas of your background, the ocean water, you're going to have issues. We want to pull back and let the sophistication of the algorithm do the choosing for us. You have a hand tool for moving the screen around like I'm doing, but I just hold the space bar down and the hand tool comes up like in most Adobe applications. You have a lasso tool and the polygonal tool right here to grab a selection as well. You can zoom up or zoom down. And these two tools are awesome. This is the quick selection tool, which allows you to run it along horizon lines and such, and it does a pretty good job of grabbing those things. But here we don't want a really good selection. We want to use another tool to grab this that's just astonishing. And we're going to use this tool right here, the Refine Edge Brush Tool, which is just, whoo, it is amazing what it can do. Now, over here to the right, you have all of these different adjustments and options that I cannot go through, but I do want to show you this. You can view this on black. I'll turn up the opacity right here. So basically, it's making the selection show and it's blacking out everything else. If you invert it, it would be the opposite. So your selection would be black. You can choose white, you can choose onion skin. Onion skin is where there's nothing there and you see those checker boxes or you see what's underneath. So if you're in a layer, it's gonna show what's underneath. If you don't have any layers, it's gonna show those little checker boxes meaning nothing. So you can do this even if you don't have a layer. I just choose overlay and I like about 50% because I want to see what I'm grabbing and what I'm not grabbing. 
You can choose any color you want, but I'm accustomed to using the red in Quick Mask, so that's what I'm doing. And if you want it to flip to the masked areas or flip to everything but the areas that you're painting, whichever makes sense to you, you can do that there. You can also invert it down here. Now, edge detection and smart radius are really powerful and I'm just going to briefly tell you about those after I show you something else. This is the golden tool over here. The Refine Edge Brush Tool. Newly rewritten algorithms are now allowing us to just come along here and paint and it's gonna do almost all the work for you. Yes, you can clean it up a little here and there, but this has been superior to luminosity masking and sometimes even the layer style blending options, blend if, in ease and precision and the ability to finesse, which we need, especially as landscape photographers. We want control of every area of our image to do all of that fine tuning to perfection. Now watch this, this is just phenomenal. Make your brush bigger or smaller by using the brackets on your keyboard, or you can go up here to the brush options. And all you have to do is have the brush into what you've already selected, which is red, and have that brush also go outside of the stuff you don't want it to select, which would be all of this background. And just click and drag and hold it down. Don't worry about what it's doing as you're doing it. And don't zoom way up and try to get a precise selection as you're doing this, like every leaf and everything. It actually seems to work better by doing it a little more bluntly. So I'll let go, runs the algorithm, and I will tell you right now, we have nearly a perfect selection already. Better than any luminosity mask I've used or blend if or any other method. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the brush tool to do some cleanup. And you either can use the plus or the minus, which means either painting or erasing, or you can hold the alt or option down and it'll go to a minus and you let go and it'll be a plus. I'm gonna zoom up on my image and let's look at what has happened here. We can pull back where you don't see the selection, we can pull forward and look how incredibly accurate it got this image all the way up to the edges. Just phenomenal. It is a much more intelligent algorithm. If you don't need absolute perfection, this would fly perfectly already. But for those who want absolute perfection, if you jack up the saturation, you will see just a hair bit of overspray sometimes. Or on the other side, you'll see some areas maybe that were not painted enough or selected enough. If you right click, you can choose a hard brush or a soft brush. I'd go with a hard brush in this case. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint more red to where it may have missed. Now I'm gonna trust it on the edge though. But if you really need to do cleanup, it's a good idea to look around and see if it missed anything or if it overshot, what we wanna do is hit the plus, come over here, and look at this. That red is disappearing. This is the cleanup. You can zoom up as far as you want you want to get really crazy and you can do this cleanup right here. I don't know if you can see that on your monitor because the video is compressed, but there's just a touch of overspray. I will tell you that that overspray is at an extremely, extremely low opacity. And in most cases that would probably not even affect your image. This algorithm is so sophisticated. You can grab like hair on a person or an animal and extract them right out of the image with nearly perfect results and very, very little cleanup. So I just want to show you that if you want to clean it up, you can do this. And if you felt like it had, you know, missed an area like that, you can go to the negative or the positive, depending on how you have your settings, and you could paint it in here. And 
You can make it a soft brush if you wanted to, come up here on these edges, but I'll tell you the algorithm does a better job than doing it manually. So I'm gonna do a command option Z, Z, Z. It has history states, so here we are back to where we were. Now, so that's the cleanup. Now let's take a look at what some of these refining tools do. I'm gonna take the mask back to the 50%. By the way, if you choose marching ants, that's only gonna show what is 50% opaque or more selected. It's a very inaccurate way of seeing what's going on. I would not advise it. I would probably use black on white or white on black, like a mask painting black or painting white or this painting of red or whatever color works best for you. I like to choose the high quality preview and I like to use red. Edge detection is very interesting. If you feel like it's not getting an awesome selection of what you are working on, what this basically does is it increases the radius to which this algorithm is looking outward and inward to decide where the edge is. And smart radius is not just going to pull the whole thing out a certain amount of pixels and in, in terms of the algorithm analyzing, it's going to be a little bit smarter in its analyzing based on darkness values and colors and such. A lot to be said here, a lot to be learned and practiced, but I have gotten astonishing results without even using it. So knock yourself out and learn everything you can about this. But let's move on to the most important stuff, global refinements. You see how this edge is basically going to be very jagged. If we smoothed it, it would just basically round off those edges. Now, we're seeing a pause here, and the pause is because this thing does take a lot of RAM on your computer. So if you have a very slow computer, you're going to probably have some issues with this. And especially if you're working on a gigantic image, best to get those masks made on your native file before you size it up and save all of your selections in Photoshop as masks, or also known as alpha channels. I don't do any smoothing. I'm trying to get every leaf, every edge, every everything. Now feather is really cool and contrast, I don't use that so much either. So I'm gonna bypass that for now. But edge shift and feather are really important. If you feel like the selection is overshooting or undershooting a little bit, you can actually pull back the selection and you'll see that it's pulling it toward the water there or go the other direction, and it's because I have the invert on, and it'll back up the selection. It'll pull it back from the edge. So if you feel like you've overshot by a pixel or two or something like that, you can have that fine tuning ability. And then let's say you did pull this red back a hair and you needed a little extra feather, that blurring or that anti-aliasing on the edges, that transition zone, you could feather it a little bit if you wanted to. But I'll tell you, in most cases, I have not needed to use either of those. Again, you can invert it to where now everything that is red is gonna be the selection and everything that's not red is not gonna be the selection. And you can see when you jack this thing all the way up to 100%, there is a hair bit of pink in these trees. But just wait till you see how well this works. So I'm inverting it again. You can also invert it here. The main thing that I want you to know about is the tools to either erase it out of areas you don't want the selection for cleanup and to paint in the areas that maybe it missed. And especially this tool here, the Refine Edge Brush Tool, which will do a phenomenal job as you continue to work on your image. So in this case, you see this area here that's not completely red. I would take the brush tool, size up my brush. I'd probably go with a hard edge. I know that I have this inverted. So then I would go to the plus, not the minus, and I just paint it wherever it missed. A couple spots here and there. Come up here, see it missed up here. And continue along 
until you have everything you want selected. We could paint up here, come around here like this, and do a really sloppy, hard edge job. Don't go into the areas that the sky and the background is going to show up. Something like this. Size up my brush a little bit more here using the brackets and something like that. But watch, we'll pull back out. Let's go sloppy. Grab that phenomenal Refine Edge brush tool and let's just go ahead and start painting right here and just come along here, go up here, come up to the top, go out to like the hand, go up to the head, on the statue, come around here, and again, very quickly, I was able to get a phenomenal selection on this. And there we go. Do I have to do a little bit of cleanup? You're never gonna get an absolute perfect mask out of any tool, but I have never seen anything work as good as this. So yes, I'm gonna have to clean up a little bit here, here, some of the lightness values I didn't grab. Maybe the trees here, but for the very most part, it has done a phenomenal job. All right, now let's just see how well this works. Decontaminate colors will actually analyze the colors in this area and do some painting of the color, kind of like in color mode where you still see the normal detail so that there's not weird color fringing on the edges. I would be very careful with this because it seems to be a little bit blunt. Over here is how you want to output it. Do you want it a selection? Do you want it a layer mask? Do you want it a new layer, etc.? If you do it a layer mask, it'll automatically be a layer mask, but you will need to save it. Or if you do a selection, that'll work too because you can turn selections into layer masks. But let's try this. Let's hit OK and let's test this out. I'm going to zoom up. And for those of you who don't know how to do this, we have a selection. Selections can be masks and they can be further refined. Go to select, save selection, and just call this land one. Whatever makes sense to you. Hit OK, then pop a mask on there. Now that saved selection that you just did will be under your channels. And there it is, land number one. So if somehow you lost your selection, deselect, and you lost your mask somehow, I deleted mine. You can always go to your channels. It's always there with the file. Command, click on it. There's the selection and you can hit mask and there's the mask. White will reveal, black will conceal or hide. So white is revealing this land. So white is revealing this layer's land. So watch this. I'll click on this land and let's pull back just a hair so you can see what's going on. Let's just do a really quick levels adjustment. I want to pull up the blacks a little bit. Check that out. Let's say you want to darken the blacks a little bit. Let's look at the precision of this without even any cleanup yet. That is going to work magnificently, and I have not gone in here and intricately erased all of that very, very low opacity spray. It's going to work phenomenally. Look at that. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Now, again, if it seemed to overshoot or undershoot back in your options, you have the ability to pull it back or pull it forward or feather it a little bit more, whatever you need. But it is phenomenal, just phenomenal. So we could darken this if we wanted to, hit OK. Let's say we wanted to work on the sky. Well, white reveals the land, so this one is the sky because it's hiding all of the rest here. So this is what's being shown where there's black here. So let's go ahead and let's say image, adjustments, hue, saturation. We want to pull in a little bit more blue in the sky. Look at that. There's no effect here, hardly at all. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And we're at 300% viewing distance. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous selection. So with 
almost all of my work when I'm trying to do the best possible work I can, I want selections of all the main things in my image. I want a separate selection of my sky, separate selection of my foreground stuff, like this mountain and statue. I would probably want separate selections for these distant areas because they're more blurry. And now we can do that with some speed and some ease and then be able to make our separate adjustments to those areas. For those of you who are getting into masking, oh my gosh, this is just the golden ticket. I wish I would have had this algorithm when I first started in Photoshop. It is phenomenal and it's gonna do pretty much everything you need to do even without the use of luminosity masks or blend if or whatever else you might be accustomed to using. So I hope this video helps you out enormously with your own selections and photography. Thank you very much for following me. We have many new workshops, many new video tutorials, and a lot of very exciting stuff like the next Ultimate Fine Art Printmaking Workshop in Las Vegas, which the last one was a hit. It was far oversold and everyone was totally amazed at what we're teaching. And I wish you and your family and your loved ones the best, all the best to you and great light to you.